A woman used to give very, very generous Christmas presents to her many grandchildren. So every year she will send to each one of them one present. The problem was that after the grandchildren would receive the presents, they would never send that thank you card or just simply say thank you grandma for the, for the present. They never said thank you. So one day, Christmas came again, and she decided to send a present, to, uh, a, a generous, uh, actually it was a, a, a hundred dollar check to each one of the grandchild, children, each one of them. Next day, each one of them came to, say, to see her and to say thank you. She was telling this story to, to a friend of hers, and the friend asked, Wow, what, what happened this time? How is it that these guys became so polite this time? And the lady said, well, this time was not that difficult to solve this problem. Because this time, I wrote the checks, $100 check, but I didn't sign them. <laughs> Christmas. What kind of thoughts come to your mind during Christmas time? What is it that you think about when Christmas comes? If, if you are a kid, if you are a kid, of course, you, you will think about toys, you will think about presents, you will think about uh, uh, candies. When I, was, when I was a kid, Christmas was the best time for me because my mom knew how to, how to, uh, how to sew uh, clothes. So she would do, she would do me uh, brand new pants, brand new shirts, and every Christmas I would be using my brand new outfit every Christmas. So it was big time, big, big, a big day for me. If you're an adult, if you're an adult, you might be thinking about uh, uh, stress for the gifts that you have to give. You might be, you might be stressed because of, of the cards, the calls that you have to make. You might be stressed because of the, the food that you have to prepare. Some may think of, on Christmas songs like like a, a silent night, like, like joy to the world. But some others, friends, some others, for some others, Christmas means a nostalgic time for those who are not here anymore. Some others feel lonely because they don't have anyone else to, to celebrate this holiday with. Christmas can be sad. And I think... That, that kind of feeling is not so much detached from the beginning of it. The event that gave, that gave the reason for what we call today, for us to celebrate what we call today Christmas. Because the first time this was celebrated, which is what we read in Luke chapter 2, in Luke chapter 2, what happened there wasn't a joy, the most joyful moment. And I tell you why, friends. See, when king, the king was to come, people were not ready for him. Let me prove it to you. Let me prove it to you. You will think that people knowing that the king is about to come, all the factories will gather together and all the, the people that knew how to do this, they will come together and say, let's make the nicest nappy for, the, for this kid, for the babe. They would say, let's, let's make the, the best diaper ever for the kid. <laughs> but they didn't. Because the reading that what, you, what, you, what we just read in, in, in Luke chapter 2 verse 7, it says that the, the Mary, the mother, had to wrap the baby in swaddling clothes. Right? You will think if people will know that the king is about to come, they will, all the carpenters will get together, all the artisans will get together, and they will put together the most special golden cradle for the babe. But they didn't. Because Luke chapter 2 and verse 7 says that, that they place him in a manger. The king is coming, the king is coming. You, you will think all, the, all the, uh, the hotel owners, all the business people will get together and they will say, okay, which, which of the hotels are, uh, is the most beautiful one here in town and let's have the most special room for the babe. But they didn't, they didn't do that. 
Because Luke chapter 2 and verse 7 says that there was no room for them in the inn. So the factories didn't, didn't talk about this and making the best diaper. The hotel, the hotel owners didn't get together and say, okay, let's, let's give him the most special room we have. Right? The cradle wasn't a special one. It was just where animals were. A manger. A dirty manger. You will think, okay, this class, this, this social class, classes didn't do this. So how about, how about the low class? And that's what the shepherds were considered. They will be ready because the, the poor are always ready for these kind of things. Where the text that we read says that the angels ha- an angel had to come to the shepherds for them to know that somebody with capital S was coming. So the shepherds were waiting for him, right? An angel of the Lord stood before him, before them is what we read in Luke chapter 2 and verse 9. They were waiting for, for him. No one, friends, the reality is that when Jesus came for first time to this world, no one was welcoming him. No one welcomed Jesus. Okay, so the business people... The working class, right? The low class, no one was welcoming Jesus. But how about, how about those that are prepared, educated, the magi, right? Scientists. Were they ready? Were they ready, friends? Well, I want to suggest, and just based on Matthew chapter 2, that they were not that ready either. It took a miracle for them to say, okay, that star is moving and is, is pointing that way. Let's follow the star. So they had to be impressed also for them to to do something about it. Okay, but these people were far away from the, from, the, from the chosen nation. They didn't do, they didn't know. So my question will be, how about the king of that nation? Was he ready? Was he ready, friends? Matthew chapter 2 says that he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. He wasn't ready. He was not welcoming the king. Friends, the king was coming and his people... The people that he came for was not ready for him. Okay, so businessmen, they weren't ready. Uh, Working class, they weren't ready. Um, The the scientists of the time were not ready. I know. Church people. Right? These people read the Bible. They know about it. They read the Bible. They should know that the king is about to come. They should be ready. Welcoming the king. Well, Matthew chapter 2, that also gives us some information on this. Matthew will say that the, the, the Herod, and when the Magi came to him, the priest and the teachers of the law were there. And these took place in Jerusalem. Where was the babe to be born? Bethlehem. If they were waiting for the babe, what were they doing in Jerusalem? They were supposed to be in Bethlehem to welcome him. They weren't. Therefore, they were not welcoming Jesus. Sad. Sad, friends. This is sad. These people knew the scripture so well, and they didn't care. They did not welcome the king. Neither the merchants nor the governors welcomed him. Neither foreign people nor the local people Welcome, welcome him. What is worse, not even the religious authorities welcomed Jesus. None. Nobody. No one welcomed Jesus. Sad. It is so sad, friends. I mean, today, I don't know if you are counting the days. I am. Today, in Mar- this day marks the second month of us being here in this place. The second month already. Two months ago, we came for first time to this church. We, est- we stood in front of you for first time two months ago. You know what impressed me the most? This house was packed. This house was packed. 
People came to see their new pastor, and the, the, the house was packed. The, the ushers, the deacons reported to me after the service that the, the, they had a, a, a record number of attendance. Because it feels good, and I felt, I felt good, friends, because it feels good when you are welcome to a place. Doesn't it? But friends, the king came. The king of the universe came. The creator of the universe came, and no one welcomed him. And that's why John says, he came to his own, and his own did not welcome him. Sad. No one welcomed Jesus. No one expected him. But thanks to his first coming, we know that he will come for a second time. It is because he came one, he came one, one that we can now say he is coming again. Question for you, friends. That was the first time. Okay, they didn't know, they, they didn't have all the information, they were, they were uh, doing something else. So that was just that time. What about today? What about today, friends? Have we learned the lesson? Are we ready to welcome the king? Right? Is, is our president, the president of this nation, waiting for the king? Is the city of Tacoma waiting for the king? Is South Tacoma Seventh-day Adventist Church waiting for the king? Are you and I waiting for the king? The king. Have we learned the lesson? Good news, friends, is that the sermon doesn't end here. Because the narrative that we are studying doesn't end here. It continues. And every time you hear a sad news in the Bible, all that you have to do is keep reading because joy, joy is on its way. It's a narrative. So we read in this narrative and, and we come, following what we have covered, we come to verse 10. And now the situation changes. Because in verse 10, Luke chapter 2, we're still in Luke chapter 2. In verse 10, you will find now that the angel comes to the shepherds. The shepherds, they, they feel fear. And there is one message that the, shepherd are, uh, the, the, the angel is bringing to the shepherds. One message. And the message starts with this word, fear not. Fear not. Why? I mean, why, why would they fear? Why would I fear, friends? Do you fear? Are you afraid? I mean, I mean are you afraid of, of earthquakes, for example? Are you afraid of sickness? Are you afraid of death? What well, the message of the angel is that if you are afraid of any of the above, the message simply it says, do not. Do not be afraid. Fear not, as the King James Version says. Fear not. Life might be rough, but the Bible says, fear not. Sickness might be knocking on your door, but the Bible says, fear not. Death might be coming to your bed, but the Bible says, fear not. To this fearful world, the angel's message is fear not. And the question that I have, and I like questions, you now know this. I like questions. The question is, why is it that I cannot feel this fear? I mean, it's obvious if, I be, if I'm feeling striking, stricken, if I feel bad and suffering, obviously I will fear or obviously I will be afraid. But the angel says, fear not. Why? The second part of that verse will give us the why. Because it says, I'm bringing good tidings of great joy. Fear not because I'm bringing good tidings of great joy. I'm still in the text, friends. Luke chapter 2, verse 10, the second part. Fear not because I'm bringing good tidings of great joy. Now, the word tidings here is key for us. For us to understand where we're going with this. Tidings. The word tidings comes from the Greek. You, 
eogalizo, eogalizo. And eogalizo simply means, is the word that comes where we, where we have the word evangelize, evangelize. And evangelize simply means to announce, what friends? The good news. And that's why other versions of the Bible will translate this as the good news. I'm bringing, the angel says, I'm bringing the good news of great joy. Because it comes from that word. So what is the angel bringing to them? And why is it that they are not to fear? Because the angel is bringing the gospel. The gospel. Because the gospel is the solution for fear. Because when you feel going down, when you are suffering, when you are afraid, the gospel is the solution for fear to run away from you. And now the angel says that that gospel that he's bringing is the gospel which will be to all the people. The angel is saying these things, friends. I'm not making this up. The angel is saying that we are not to fear because the gospel is being brought to their attention. And this gospel that he's bringing to their attention is for everyone. So not just only Samoans, not only Americans, not only Ecuadorians, not only people that come to church, but everyone. Gospel is for everyone, and we should praise God for that because we can be included on this. And that's why John 3.16, for God so love the world. It's not that God only loves those who behave. God loves everyone. Those who come to church, those who do not come to church. God loves everyone. So the angel says, I'm bringing good tidings of great joy. Right? The good news. The gospel. What is that gospel? What is, what is the angel making a reference to when he, said, when he says, when the angel says that, He's bringing the gospel. This is the message. Today, and this is verse 11. Today in the town of David, here it is, a Savior has been born to you. Fear not because a Savior has been born to you. Fear not because a Savior is given to you. Fear not because there is finally a solution for all the problems of human beings. Fear not because a Savior has been born to you. See, friends, you can try to be as good as you can, right? You can feed all the homeless, homeless people. You can dress all the naked. Or you can do all the good things you can. But after being a good person, you still need a Savior. There is nothing else that can take care of the biggest problems of human beings, which is sin, than a Savior. Above all the needs that we have, above all the problems that we face, above all that we experience every day, the need of a Savior is still the ultimate solution. That's why it is a great, great, uh, great joy. It is great joy because this is a wonderful news. This is what we were waiting for. We were in need of a solution. And finally, a Savior is born to us. Now we can say, hallelujah, the Lord. We can praise the name of God because He has given His Son to reconcile us back to Him. Now we can, see, we can say Merry Christmas. Because Christmas finally has, has a meaning. See, the word Christmas is actually, in the way that I, I, I try to always work with words so I can learn the word, always I have to separate those words to understand it. Christmas. Christ actually is a word that is, is to be read in a different way. How do you read that word? Christ. And mass, M-A-S, is actually the Spanish word for more. Interestingly enough, friends, if you want to celebrate Christmas, if you want to understand what Christmas is all about, you need to have more of Christ. Christmas, more of Christ. Christmas, more of Christ. That's what Christmas is all about. And now because Christ has been given to us, He has been born to us, then we can say Merry Christmas. 
But the text doesn't end there. The narrative doesn't end there. It continues saying, because now the angels, after they have delivered the message, now they are ready to praise to the one that sent them to deliver that message. And in verse, in verse 14, they would say, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Here is the solution. Here is the gospel. A savior. A savior to solve your problems. A savior to reconcile the separation that you had, that you experienced with your creator. A savior as a solution of your life. And because of that, glory to God in the highest. Alan G. White in the book Desire of Ages, page uh, 48, she says this simple sentence. I want you to pay attention to this, friends. Come back to me. Come back to me. Pay attention to this. She says, the story of Bethlehem is an exhaustless theme. Why exhaustless? Why is this, why is this theme exhaustless? Why? Because we can talk about this king all day, every day, friends. Listen, friends, listen. The king left. You have to understand. You have to understand that this king that we're talking about, he left his kingly garment for a swaddling cloth. This king, this king that we're talking about, he, he left his glorious throne for a dirty, dirty manger. The king that I'm talking about this morning, friends, he left his royal heavenly mansion for a stinky barn. The king that we're talking about this morning, friends, he's, he left his angels' adoration and fellowship for animals' fellowship. The king that we're talking about this morning left his heavenly family for a human family. What kind of king is this? What kind of king is this? That is why, why it's proper to say with the angels, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest for his infinite gift. Glory to God in the highest for his infinite generosity. Glory to God in the highest. For such incomparable gift. Glory to God in the highest for so wonderful Christmas gift. And guess what, friends? This check is signed. But there is one more point that happens in verse 14. And with this, I'm going to bring it to a conclusion. The angel's message is glory to God in the highest, yes. But then they continue saying, and on earth, and that includes us, that has to do with us, friends, and on earth, what is the word? Peace to men. How much do we need peace in this world? How much do we need peace in this planet? Am I right? Am I right? Jesus said, it's the same king that is bringing peace to the world, that the, one, the one that said later on, blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Why are they blessed? Because they are distributing the peace that he brought in the first place. So friends, when a country declares war, war to another, you, a peacemaker, need to raise the flag of peace. When your neighborhood proclaims war, you, as a peacemaker, need to proclaim peace. When at, at your workplace, conflict emerges, you, as a peacemaker, need to propose peace. When in your home, all stand against you, you answer with peace. When the church, brethren, uh, um, want conflict, you Advocate peace when your spouse gets up with arms to war, you mediate for peace. When your children are ready for war, you seek peace. Because blessed are the peacemakers, and on earth, peace to men. Peace is what we need 
in the conflictive world that you and I live in. The captain, the captain of a ship got so sick, so sick, and they were in the middle of the, of the ocean. There was no way to get help for him. He was sick and sick and got worse and worse and worse. And then the last will of the captain, Captain Jim actually was his name, was for somebody to read the Bible to him. Somebody. Look somebody in the, in the ship. Bring me somebody that can read the Bible and can pray for me because there is nothing else that you guys can do. Bring that person and everyone start looking at each other. The Bible, what is that? Till they remember there was a young man in, in the ship who was, used, who was always found reading the Bible. Charlie, go get Charlie. Go get Charlie and bring it to the captain. So Charlie came to the captain and he started reading and he prayed with, with, he prayed for the captain, with the captain, and then he started reading the Bible. And Charlie goes to Isaiah chapter 53 and verses 4 and 5. And he reads the Bible, and then he reads the Bible the way uh, his mom used to read to him, adding his name in the reading. So whatever he said, we or I, he would, the mother would put his name, Charlie, in it. The captain heard this, and this was his request. Charlie, please, Charlie, put my name in there. Captain Jim said, Charlie, please put my name in that reading and read it again. So Charlie read again Isaiah 53, and he went like this. Surely he has borne John's griefs and carried Jim's sorrows. Yet Jim esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for Jim's transgressions. He was bruised, bruised for Jim's iniquities. The chastisement for Jim's peace was upon him, and by his stripes, Jim is healed. Right after the captain heard this being read to him, he died. He died with a big <laughs> smile on his face in a peaceful way because he had just accepted his Savior. He had just accepted the Prince of Peace. He could die peacefully because the Prince of Peace was in his heart. Peace is what we need. And peace is what the Savior brings to each one of us. Are we at peace with each other? Maybe there is a person who is not at peace with somebody here. If this were your last day, are you at complete peace with everybody? That's something that you, have to, you need to answer to yourself. If, you, if this were the last day that you are to live, are you at peace with God? Are you at peace? Friends, it is time to seek for peace. Peace with our neighbors. Peace with your sister. Peace with your brother. Peace with your son. Peace with your daughter. Maybe there is a person who is not at peace with somebody in this place. If this, is, this were the last day, you have to answer this question. Are you at peace, at complete peace with everyone around you? Are you at peace with God? And friends, let me tell you one thing. This can only happen when the Prince of Peace comes to your life. For that, you and I need to welcome the King. So let me just end where we started. No one welcomed the King. No one. Everyone was supposed to know. These people knew the Bible, the Old Testament by then, by memory, every word. But no one welcomed the King. But however, friends, you and I can change that today. You and I do not need to repeat the story. The question here for you and for me is, will you welcome him? Will you welcome the king? Will you welcome him in your house? Will you welcome him in your heart? Today 
is the day to do so. Today is the day that Jesus wants to come. Do you hear the angel? The angel said, today a king is born. Today a savior is given. It is today that Jesus wants to come to your heart. It is today that Jesus wants to be your savior. It is today that he wants to be the most important part of your, of your life. Will you welcome him? Will you welcome him? Merry Christmas.